Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. Proverbs 27 reads, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. The friendships we make in life matter. They are either helping us or hurting us. They can lift us up or they can pull us down. Our closest friends should be those who bring us closer to God. Join me for part two of the message, The Value of Friendships. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14, Paul said, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? So don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Don't get under the yoke of an unbeliever. And you know, there's some people that just have a real dominant controlling personality. You don't need to get under their yoke. You know that? And I was a young minister. I wasn't in full-time ministry. I was a fresh out of college, but there was a guy that was really wanting me to help him and do ministry. And he was old enough to be my dad, you know, and he was wanting me to do this and travel these different countries and do different things. And I heard the Lord say to me, don't get under his yoke. I didn't even know what that meant. And that scripture, when I read it tonight, comes to my mind, the Lord saying that. In other words, he's too heavy handed. And you know, there are some people that got real strong personalities And that strong personality will get you in the wrong places. That strong personality will have you talking about stuff in people's business. Have you a meddler? Have you a busybody? Have you preoccupied with everybody else's world? How many know we all have plenty going on in our own world that we really don't need to spend time trying to figure everybody else's life out? The scripture says don't get unequally yoked together. Don't get yoked up. Of course, this could relate to marriage, but it also talks about just certain fellowship. What real friendship do you have with an unrighteous person? Oh, we just spend hours and hours and hours together. Now you need to reach him. Jesus was a friend to sinners. He was friendly towards sinner. But you understand he also had Peter, James, and John that were his inner circle, people that he went to in times of prayer in Acts chapter 4, whenever they got in trouble. The Bible says they went to their own company and they had times of prayer. So friendships are making us or breaking us, right? They're sending us forward or they're pulling us backwards. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 33 says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Bad company ruins good morals. Now, people will invariably read that and say, but Pastor, you don't understand. That stuff doesn't affect me. Isn't that interesting? You're deceived. You're one of those people he was talking about, about being deceived. Here you have the Apostle Paul being inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we really don't just say the Apostle Paul said it. We have to back up and say the Holy Spirit said it through the Apostle Paul. And he said, don't be deceived on something. Bad company ruins good morals. So who are you hanging around? What kind of people are your kind of people? Now, here's how it works. You know, gossips like gossips. You know, if somebody came to me and said, Pastor Tom, I need you to go out and buy me some drugs. You know, I started to say marijuana, but I can find you some marijuana now, all right? I know where they're selling it. It's all over the place right now, right? So I'm going to have to update my message, all right? But, you know, if somebody came to me and said, Pastor Tom, I need some illegal drugs, street drugs. I have no idea where they're selling. I mean, I can assume, I I guess I'd just go around. But see, I'm not peddling that stuff. I'm not in that world. Does that make sense? And people that peddle gossip, people that are selling gossip know how to find you. People that are meddlers, they find other meddlers. The peddlers find the meddlers, right? And so we got to realize we attract our own. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here. We attract our own. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 33. Of course, if anybody's listening to this on on the radio, they're going, he knows where they're selling marijuana. People, we got medical marijuana in Oklahoma, all right? So the days have changed. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33, NIV says, it corrupts good character, okay? 
It corrupts good character. So here's a couple of other good scriptures. Simply put is this. If I were going to summarize this thought, your best friends need to bring the best out of you. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Your best friends need to bring the best out of you. Okay, so here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 17. It says, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. So we would say it this way, if you want to keep your edge, you can't be around a bunch of flat people, really. If you want to keep your edge, you need to be around people that are sharpening you. We call it a reciprocal relationship, mutually beneficial relationship, a relationship that you're receiving, they're receiving, and it's, it's building one another up. It's edifying it. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. That's what God wants. So you say, well, pastor, how can I get some good friendships? I mean, we're on the right path here. What do I need to do if I need some good friendships? Well, number one, you need to be in the right place, correct? You know, you need to be around the right place. I remember when I was a freshman in college, I remember the first class I took. I remember the first day I was in school. I remember sitting down and I sat in a class and there was a young man, this is a state university, not a Christian school, young man walked in the classroom and he had a t-shirt on and it had something about Jesus. And I can remember sitting in that class going, well, I know one person I'll be meeting this semester. And I made my way over to that guy. We met and we stayed in contact the whole time I was in school. You know, it's interesting, you have to, look for people to seek them out. In other words, what are you looking for? And you need to realize there are certain relationships. Birds of a feather have a way of flocking together. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25 says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day appearing. Notice capital D, the day appearing. As you see the coming of the Lord, what do you need to do? Don't neglect meeting together. And notice this, as the habit of some is. Did you know church attendance is not an elective? It's an imperative. You need to be around other people because why? You'll encourage one another. And then it says, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So, you know, we need to be in church more and more as the rapture comes. You need to be around believers. This is your church family. This is your home. This is where you need to be around. You need to be around people that can strengthen you. And you say, well, pastor, I've got some good Christian television. And you know, I thank God for programming that helps people that are shut in, people that are not able to attend church. I mean, I would hate to have a television if we didn't have any type of Christian. In other words, thank God there's people coming through. But Christian television is no substitute for you being face-to-face with other people. You need to be around other believers, okay? So the Bible says not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some is. So there is a habit you can get into. It's a habit. Did you know some people, they just get out of the habit? How come you're not in church? Oh, I just got out of the habit. I've just got out of the habit of going. I just quit going. Well, you can get out of the habit or you can get back in the habit. So wrong place, wrong time, you meet wrong people, and eventually you'll start doing the wrong stuff, okay? So the right place, and the second thing I want to emphasize about a good friendship, right place, second thing I want to emphasize here is you need to have the right attitude. You don't gain a friend to take something from them. You don't become a friend to someone because you're trying to benefit yourself. Yeah. So the friendliest people have the most friends. That's the way it works, right? If you want to have friends, you got to be friendly. If you're going to shake somebody's hand, you're going to have to open your fist. And sometimes the people, they don't really want to be friendly, but yet why aren't people friendly towards me? Well, you're going to have to get beyond yourself. I can remember years ago, I hosted a minister alliance meeting here in our fellowship hall. This is many years ago. And there was one minister that was just filling in at a church here. In other words, he was retired. They were without a pastor. And they said, well, you just come and temporarily fill in this position. Well, he said, well, I'm in town. I'm going to bloom where I'm planted. I may only be here for six months, but I'll come to the alliance meeting and get to know people. And this gentleman came in, and I'll always remember this. He didn't know anybody there. You know, people kind of get to know one another, and you kind of feel like you're on the outside looking in. 
But I'm saying anytime you get with people you already know, there's a tendency to gravitate where we all get over here and talk. And if you're new in the group, you can get left out. How many just know that's reality, right? It happens that way in any setting. And this guy came in the room. I'll always remember it. He'd just walk around the room. How you doing? He'd introduce, how you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? I mean, this guy's, you know, probably 70 years old. Just, how are you doing? How are y'all doing? My name's this. And he was introducing himself. And I remember thinking to myself, that's a great example right there. See, the Bible says if you're going to be a minister, one of the qualifications of a minister is you got to be given to hospitality. And the word given to hospitality literally means a lover of strangers. So you got to love people. You got to love people that are not like you, people that are different, just all kinds of people. You got to just love people, right? So in order to, to have a good friend, we need to be a good friend, right? We don't take friends, we make friends. And so we just need to reach out. And so the idea here is Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 24 says, it says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Other translations will translate that a little differently. But think about that. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. You say, what did y'all learn at church tonight? Pastor said we need to be friendly. <laughs> well, can I tell you something? If you're going to reach your neighbors with the gospel, it won't be because you were very unfriendly towards them. How did you reach that guy? Oh, I was very unfriendly to him. And he eventually came around. <laughs> That's not going to be it. Whoever I reach with the gospel is going to be because I was friendly towards them. So do you understand the difference between missional friendship where you're reaching out to a person versus just close-knit relationships and they have expressed no indication, no desire to change. The ship's going down and you've jumped on board with them. If we're going to reach people with the gospel, we want to reach out in a positive way. How are you doing? Care about them. Learn their name. Learn their family's name. Pray for them. You know, the point that I quote so often, and it's a great one. I went out to find a friend and I could not find one there. I went out to be a friend, and I found friends everywhere. They're just everywhere. So just be a friend to people, right? So have the right attitude. Now here's another thing that kind of goes along with the attitude. What's your motive? What's your motive? Notice Romans chapter 12 and verse number 9 says this, let love be genuine. You know, we can't say, man, I want to be their friend. Why do you want to be their friend? They got a boat, I want to be their friend. Why do you want to be their friend? Because, man, we need somebody to drive a carpool on these kids of ours. and they we got to be sincere. We've got to be genuine, right? Now, here's the New Living Translation of this same verse, and I like it. It says this, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. So we can't be fake. We can't be insincere in our love, but we got to really love people. So uh, then it goes on to say, hate what is wrong and hold tightly to what is right. But notice this, don't just pretend that you love another person, really love them, care about them. Let brotherly love continue, correct? Thanks for joining me today. Good friendships are a gift from God. So many blessings come our way through godly relationships. If we desire better friendships, we must focus on being a better friend. One writer put it this way, I went out to find a friend and could not find one there. I went out to be a friend and I found friends everywhere. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.